And welcome back to Flowers Minty Springtime Edition. This will probably be the last episode that I record prior to Christmas. I'm recording this on the 22nd. I don't think it's actually gonna interfere with the upload schedule at all, but hopefully, you know, taking three or four days off, I'll finally be over this stupid head cold, like, I know it's probably not the greatest to hear somebody kind of like stuffing up halfway through an episode and their voice halfway given out. So hopefully over the small break that I decide to take, I'll be able to kind of just be done with this. Uh, I, I, I would ideally be recording so much more of this. I would probably already be done by this point because I feel like the story's kind of hit go mode in a way and I don't want to like, you know, I don't want to stop playing, but I can't, you know, I don't want to force myself into just, oh, I'll just lose my voice if I do two episodes a day or something. So anyway, when we were last together, things are not great. Like Suo is in such a terrible position. Like Rika has just turned into the world's biggest shitter. She's completely ruining everybody's queer experience. Good lord. I, I, I really don't know. I really don't know how you pull Rika out of this hole. I don't know how you, may, you redeem her for this. This is just... She's just being such an incredibly big shithead that it's, it's astounding to me. It's just not... It's not a turn that I saw in any way coming into this. We keep passing each other by. No... My Yuri is avoiding me on purpose. I've barely been able to exchange a word with her. During break, at lunch too, she even turned me down for ballet practice after class saying she'd rather do it alone. Our only interaction, yeah, it's practice, is during the practice for the hymn. From all the practice, my Yuri's voice is now on par with the members of the choir. Perhaps she always had natural talent because her singing, compared to when she first started, is being instructed by Komikado, is beyond recognition. Komikado, who has been conducting, waves her conductor's stick at me, and I take my hands off the keyboard. Oh yeah. Not in the best not in the best mood. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on, Narine. Her long fluttering lashes and ladylike way of speaking. I feel annoyed at my own spinelessness. Gee, I wonder. What could be the problem, Rika? I wonder. Rika comes rushing over and gently lifts my bang. Stop it. You're not concerned. Get out of here. She puts her forehead against my own to check my temperature. Her cheeks, my cheeks turn red as her lips draw so close that we're almost kissing. You're doing this on purpose. You are doing this to flaunt in front of, you are such a terrible person. Get away from me, you fucking ghoul. When I move my forehead away in embarrassment, Mayuri, who is staring off into space, enters my peripheral vision, and I hurriedly grab Komikado's hand. I put Komikado's hand to my forehead, and she blinks and nods. Yeah, you stupid bitch. Just trying to, like, get me to go back to the room with her alone. That's what's going on. Suo's on to your stupid little tricks, Rika. Yeah, you're not a doctor, dumbass. 
Not that Narine is either, but Narine is not proven to be a gigantic fucking blackmailing liar either. Oops, I think I'm a little a little more anger than I maybe intended uh, for this particular Let's Play series. My bad. She takes her hand away from my forehead, then pets my head. My feelings of irritation slowly dissipate. <laughs> Lady, that is so... That is like the biggest understatement of the century. I look down, unable to tell her that her, her kind words are off the mark. She continues gently stroking my head. Yes! Let's... I want to talk to you. Oh, God. Let Suo be brave enough to open up to this girl and tell her, like, what's going on? What's going on? Or at least, like, talk to somebody about your stepmother. Her warm voice flows over me. Rika looking at somebody else she's going to have to try and take out of the picture, I bet. We can take it easy over here, she says, and hands me a fragrant cup of coffee. The heat of it spreads through my hands, so I respond with a yes. <laughs> With this encouragement, I take a sip of the coffee. I'm not used to... <clears throat> I take a sip of the coffee. I'm not used to the bitter acidic flavor, but... The warm coffee sliding down my throat and settling in my stomach returns me to a sense of peace. I asked the name of the coffee, but since I only know the famous brands, I don't know this one. But... They're all special beans to me. I'd been feeling down, so the fact that she made me this special coffee warms my heart. You perceptive. I know somebody who might be interested in you that is just per as perceptive. Perhaps, perhaps you two should have a little more alone time after this. Because you are literally the easiest book to read, and we don't even have to go to the library to do it. Komikado sips her coffee elegantly. You seem different to that. that you seem different to that. You seem different to then, she says to me, shaking her golden hair as she nods. Oh, that is the world's biggest, biggest, most largest, the biggest, most largest, most understatement in human history. She's touched a nerve, and my hand holding the coffee starts to shake a bit. Kamikado, who is sharp and has probably figured it out, murmurs, That's what I thought. Because your poker face kind of sucks. It's probably easy to figure out. I put my coffee on the countertop and hesitate. Oh, please do. Oh, please do. That one point. The vice president already noticed there's something wrong, so it seems like a good idea to open up to her. Or maybe it is because it has become too much to bear it alone. Yeah, you are literally carrying the weight of so much on your shoulders right now. It is like, there's nobody that could look at her at this point and not understand that, oh, yeah, something's really wrong. So. 
Well, that's one way of putting it. It's more that you were blackmailed into having a closer relationship, but sure. I omit the romantic aspect of the relationship. Kamikado twirls her hair and furrows her brow and says, Oh. Yeah, three-person groups kind of just felt like this is going to happen, I think. You're, you're... There are a lot of people that are naturally just going to gravitate toward one another much easier, and so that's... It's very easy to be, like, the odd one out here. She takes a sip of coffee and furrows her brows. A novel I read before said that humans are creatures who like to create hierarchies. Regardless of sex, we insist on making frameworks. kind of like it kind of feels like a trash system in a way like I get that like it's on paper it's a good idea to try and get people to talk to other people but I think that that has to happen naturally I think that there are ways you could go about getting people to talk and meet with one another where you could like switch things out on a more regular basis. I just think that there's a better way of, of doing all of this. Like obviously like if you end up sharing a dorm with people you're going to grow close to them or it's not gonna work but this system of just kind of like forcing it and then making it a three-person group when it's very very clear that factions will form even within a three-person group just feels like this was kind of set up as a bad idea from the get-go. Um... Like, the previous system was what? Just normal school? I assume? If the previous system was just normal school, I think that that was probably better, but... If that wasn't working clearly, then we probably need this here. It just needs some adjustment. Um, so I don't think the Amitié system is entirely bad. Because it was, I, I, I feel that it was instituted because this probably wasn't working. I think that we need the system or it's, it's vi like it's an important part of what this school offers. I think it just needs work. Something about Komikado's question shakes me deep to my core. As someone who was unable to make friends, I came knocking at the gate of this academy because of its artificial friend system. Exactly, like, this is one of the re- like, it's a reason that a lot of people would probably come here. Because, I think that maybe the idea of, you know, kind of just having those chances for friendship facilitated by someone else or a system kind of makes it a lot easier of a prospect of kind of growing socially. Couldn't we have avoided all this? We certainly wouldn't have had these struggles. Without the Amitié system though, I never would have been able to get so close with these two popular girls. That's why the two-person system is... She's always been there for me. 
she accepted me despite all my problems. I can't possibly compare them. I don't know. I think the one that's not blackmailing you and the other and like holding the other one's sexuality hostage. I don't know. Like, I just, I can't get on board. Like, if somebody did this to me, they would be scum of the earth. I would not be holding on to them in this way. Like, it, it's, it's just, this is a part, of, like, I've liked Suo's character until now, but this is just one, this is one area where I can't relate to her. Because it's just like, if somebody blackmailed me in this way, this person would, like, oh yeah, they would be just fucking, like, I, I, I don't even have words that I want to say because I don't want to be super mean in this let's play but I'll just say would not be very pretty I asked Komikado if she wasn't against three people on ETA groups. She answers that she personally could not agree to them, but as the vice president of the Council of Nakaya, she agreed. Unlike me, Komikado says, her words trailing off. I don't know. <laughs> like, there's like, I don't know, man. It's gonna be hard. This, I know this game is gonna absolutely go out of its way, trip all over itself to, to, to redeem Rika, and I'm just like, oh, that is just, that is something I cannot get on board with. She smiles teasingly, and I can't help but smile along with her. Smiling makes me feel a little better. Yeah, I want to see how you figure this one out, because I don't... I'm legitimately sitting here like, I got no clue. You're just going to have to take me along for the wild ride here, because... Yeah, this is a situation where it's just like, yeah, this is not how I'd be handling this. Does such a thing exist? Probably not in Polyland. I pick my cup off the counter and gulp down the cold coffee. Instead of leading me directly to the dormitory, my feet unconsciously carry me to the library. I stand there, surrounded by the special scent particular to old books that reminds me of my grandfather and allow my mind to wander. Hey, it's best girl. I hadn't noticed her behind the desk in the evening light. Her small silhouette appearing as a ghost. <laughs> With a squeak of her wheelchair, the ghost transforms into my cat-eyed classmate. Hey. Girl, let me get you taken care of. What you want? She puts the book I was reading a bit ago, the Natsume Soseki collection, on top of the desk. I take out the card and begin checking it out for her. 
<laughs> At least she's good natured about it. What can I say? I don't know what I'm supposed to say to that. And I know that, like, with this look, she says these things just to get a reaction. And <laughs> I admire that. Yaigaki throws one of her usual self deprecatory jokes, but I am too distracted with my own troubles to respond. I finish checking out the book and hand, and hand the Saseki collection to Yaigaki, who lets out a small sigh. Boy, ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? No, come on, Suo. This you cannot lie to this girl. You can't. She knows all. It couldn't be more obvious if you took out a marker and it had literally written, "I'm having a problem," and literally wrote it on your face. Exactly. I was going to say she was just like the Hoichi, the, er the Earlis as well. Like, I, me and Erica are just always on the same page. Her way of putting it elicits a giggle from me. Laughing makes me feel a bit better, and I admit to her that it has to do with my Amitie partners. You ain't wrong. Hearing the same words from her as I had from Komikado, I just stare at Yaigaki's face. Now, nah, of course you're not. I bet you're not. She act like she ain't, but she is. She cares. Oh, did you mention that? Did you mention that really cute girl that I like? Hello. I tell her how Kamikado told me that thinking hard about my problem would open up a way for the three of us to get along. Yaigaki listens passively at first, but by the time I finish but, 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 but by the time I finish talking, her face is scrunched up like she's bit a lemon and she curses bitterly. Think Erica's on my side here and that I don't know. That sounds like a little bit of bullshit if somebody's do some fuck shittery. I am always looking to consult with you, ma'am. I nod, and she sticks out her tongue and makes a sour expression. Uh, I think you are absolutely the right person for this. There is nobody with better advice right now. No matter your life experience, even if you are not... Like, we don't know her anything about her history. But even if she has no experience with, like, romance and feelings and stuff yet... I still don't doubt that she is wise enough beyond her years to be able to say something significant. Nobody thinks that Erica is a terrible person, and if they did, I will fight them. She's so considerate. I want to give her head pats. She's so good. I nod slowly and emphatically. She scratches her head and mutters, What a pain in the neck. Ah, she knows. She likes it. She cares. She cares so much. Yes, I answer. What can you do? She sighs and scratches her brow with her slim finger. Hit me with an anecdote. I'm ready. Let's go. Let me be the anecdote with the antidote. 
ある女と男が賭けをしたんだ男はこのトランプの一番上の札を当てられたらお前の勝ち外したら負けその時は全財産をもらうと言った対する女は分かったわ私が勝ったらあなたが騙して奪った私の恋人の債権を全て返してもらう一番上はハートのエースだと告げた Yaigaki turns the book over on her knee as though it were a card and continues. Yeah, like it's. Yeah. Despite the fact that it's 52 cards, it, the, 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 you know, the odds of winning are still 50 50. She finishes the story and turns the book right side up again. Yeah, probability while the woman is talking about fate. Yeah, 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 yeah. だけど私が思うにこの話の美点は物事に本当の本当に大切なことで重要ってことはない She's a woman of practical means She's very logical and very rational 思うとき決めなくちゃいけないときは必ず来る誰にもいいかもしれないんだよ You can't be everything to everyone, and I think that that's what Suo wants to be. Kamikado said there would be a way for all three of us to get along, but Yaigaki is saying that's too good to be true. I think that is way too idealistic. <laughs> I believe Yaigaki, like 100%. Yaigaki, Yaigaki asks me this, and I. You have to decide. Like, you've got to make a choice. I'd tried to mediate and to keep our relationship from changing, but. How many visual novels have you read in your lifetime where this exact sentence. Has been said. The die has been cast. <laughs> A coerced relationship. It's not right. Yes! I told you. I told you that Erica was going to be the one with the solution. My girl knows what's up. There you go. Erica, when this is all over, I'm gonna get you a date with Komikado. I owe that to you. I'll be your wing woman, whatever you need. Whatever you need to facilitate this wonderful, this wonderful relationship that you seem interested in, I got you. I got you. She is the best. Literally the best. My God. She flashes me her cat like smile in the light of the setting sun. I thank her with a bow of my head. Suddenly her smug cat face disappears and I catch a glimpse of an expression appropriate to her age. <laughs> I bet you can't. She waves her hands and turns her face away. Ah! I can see her profile redden, and I don't think it's merely the sunlight. Oh, you adorable, adorable little child. I love her so much. She's so damn good. Oh, Erica deserves the best of everything. In the dormitory hallway, two students are talking. 
One with silver hair, the other... Oh, what's going on here? I call out to her, finally having found the Amitié partner I was looking for. <laughs> Hashtag join the discussion, let's go! So it's on, it's on Suo's list of things to do. She's always wanted to hashtag join the discussion. <laughs> My fervor is somewhat dampened by encountering this unusual pairing, but I tell Rika that I need to talk. <laughs> you are literally having a Sephiroth versus Goku discussion? Are you two dork asses literally having Goku versus Sephiroth discussions? Oh god, usually, huh? I, you are. God, you are so delightful as well. <laughs> as she gets going on this endless tangent, Rika asks if it's something urgent. With a wave of her hand, she strides jauntily away, giving us no time to argue. We watch in mute amazement as she disappears into the distance. That's how, like, everybody has to walk. Like, this girl is just like a whirling dervish of energy floating around this school, and I think that that's just kind of how she leaves everybody. Just kind of like... Looking at everybody, scratching your head, they look at each other, just like... You know, I get a feeling that every time that there is a conversation with user Riha, the, the other two people kind of look at each other, uh, like, look at, it, look at each other and say, Yep, that just happened. <laughs> My initiative snatched from me, I do as Rika says and follow after her. Don't let her control this. I didn't think you would call on me, Suo, she says. Is this going to take long, she asks, as I'm still struggling to speak. Come on, Suo, you gotta do this. This is like, you have to push through this. You know this isn't right. Not you. Don't. No, you're not doing this. Don't fall for it. She looks happily around the classroom, dyed scarlet in the light of the setting sun. I have no idea how to broach the topic. Oh, what can we do to get her the courage to do this? I can't think of a single word to say, let alone voice the ones I had prepared. She smiles happily, and the more she smiles at me, the stiffer my lips grow and the heavier my heart gets. Oh, we're steady sinking in. Her spinning around is a beautiful sight, and for a moment, it's the only thing that fills my eyes and my heart until it's replaced by a hopeless sadness. As though I have come to realize I am alone in this world. Her happy expression clouds over, and when she looks into my eyes, all of the emotion drains from her face like a wave pulling back from the sand, leaving it an emotionless mask. She knows the reason I've called her here. What it is I want to talk about. You gotta do it. Come on, Suo. I believe in you so much. I know this is hard, but you know this isn't right. I sense a quiet anger in her controlled words. When her animosity turned towards me, I start to choke up and have difficulty breathing. Uh. 
It's such a shitty dynamic. It's such a shitty dynamic. Rika knows she holds all the power here. She knows. She knows how soft of a person Suo is. Yeah, you're one to be calling people a coward. You couldn't even fucking pursue somebody honestly. You had to blackmail to get a relationship. She walks forward one step at a time, as though pushing into my mind. I... Oh. Whoa! Oh, this... You are... She's- this is a power play here. She is literally trying to fucking shut her up. And she knows this will work. She knows Suo is a fucking softy. I hate her so much! She says the words I can't bring myself to. My lips tremble, and I'm unable to say anything. Like, why do you think you deserve this relationship? Like, why do you think... Oh, the entitlement here is astounding! When she finally comprehends the words I've managed to squeeze out, she turns eyes on me so tragic, I can hardly stand to look at them. Oh, get out! Get out! You are such a manipulative bitch! Oh, I hate you. How did... Oh, it's driving me nuts! Oh, I just hate you. Oh, I just hate you! You're a coward. You are a fucking coward! Mayuri's secret. Even if the Academy is rather tolerant of homosexuality, Mayuri's secret would surely spread beyond its walls if revealed. She would leave the Academy for sure. The melancholy girl standing under the cherry trees I saw that night. She'll disappear from me. The thought, that thought, the thought lights a small spark of anger within me. Yes, come on! This is it, Suo, get angry! Yes, yes, yes! You did it, girl. That's how you do it! My words shake, Rika. I myself shudder using such a strong word, and my lips tremble. There's no good excuse for this! Crying isn't gonna make me feel sorry for you! I searched the sorrowful eyes behind the glasses for her true intentions. She grabs my arm and I let out a yelp. The sound only fans the flame of her fury. Oh, don't feel good, man. Yeah. Oh, this is not what I meant. This is not what we meant about being a coward. You need to get out of her personal space right now. You, I'm sorry, your pity story ain't gonna work on me.
Her hand clutching my arm trembles like she can't keep up the emotions spilling out of her. The hand grasping me is merciless, grimacing at the intense grip. I speak to her as though admonishing a child. Even after all this, even after all this, you say you have nothing, and this girl who you've put through fucking hell and a shitty blackmailed relationship is still willing to say that she cares about you. Open your fucking eyes and see how good you got it. I stare unflinchingly back into her desperate eyes and speak clearly. That's why I came to school with an Amitie system, I continue. She trembles at my words and after some hesitation looks up at me pitifully. So why isn't that good enough? Why isn't that good enough? It's different from at home, she adds, and I reply, that's right. This ain't the way to go about it, and I would say you've pretty much torpedoed your chances for that. Will you accept me? Yes, I whisper. She cups my cheeks in her soft hands and turns her watery eyes toward me. Then she quietly closes her eyes. No, this isn't how it, no, 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 no. You are accepted. I feel she wants some proof to symbolize it. I don't like... I don't like how this is turning out at all. I didn't have a choice in this matter. <laughs> not that I'm supposed to. I'm not a character in this story. But... Uh... I'm not a fan of this, uh, of this outcome. <laughs> she emotionally bared her home situation to me. There was probably no lie in her words. She was adopted into her family and pushed to excel. However, though she excelled, there was someone more intelligent, her little brother, to whom she was always compared. It must have been terrible, sad, and a painful life that I don't think warrants this outcome. This is why I... The emotion I feel vanishes as I feel something warm on my cheek. Tears. I'm crying? Why? For myself? For her circumstances? No. In my mind's eye, I see her standing under the cherry trees. Suddenly overcome by an emotion I myself don't even understand, I pull away from Rika! Yes! Her lips seem to move, forming the word, why? After casting my eyes downward with an apology, all I can do is flee from that hateful red room. Yes! Yes! We gotta find Mayuri. 
What? Rika Hanabi, she says, nonchalant, but not aloof. I answer, and together with the Sasaki twins, we head to the classroom. Yesterday. That the kiss meant to show I had accepted her. It must have been shocking for her to be rejected. Even so... She reproaches Ichigo, who keeps playing with her braids as they bounce off her back with each step forward. She just likes wiggly things, it's fine. Yes, Ichigo is a cat. I can like get me a laser pointer. I am getting Ichigo to run around these hallways for a very long time. She'd do it too. I bet. I bet she's got the endurance to do it as well. That's a good point too. Yagaki is the cat. The interaction with the Sasakis is not forced, and there is no change in her attitude toward me. And the relationship between Rika and Mayuri, which I tried to talk to her about yesterday... Everyone has started noticing the weakening relationship between the two, who are both such central figures to the class. But they seem to think it's just Mayuri being polite because of the relationship between Rika and me. Well, it's the start of things. You took a very important first step in rejecting her. This is big. Now, if she turns out, now if she goes turbo cunt and, and starts spreading rumors about Mayuri, which again, the school isn't gonna give a shit. But, but you know, it could absolutely have repercussions, you know, with high society type dames. I used the word dames, did I? I don't know that I have ever used the word dame in my life. And I feel like all of these ladies are much too young to be called dames. What happened in the classroom at twilight? What I said still hadn't changed anything. That nothing has changed mean it has, means it hasn't gotten worse, worse, which is good, but it can't go on like this. I flinch in surprise as someone suddenly calls my name. Ichigo laughs at my obviously startled reaction, and Ringo looks at me with suspicion. Oh, jeez. My heart thumps faster. Maybe we can't go to maybe Suo can't go to choir practice either and maybe she needs to go find somebody and have a very intense talk. I had thought perhaps a change had started occurring without me realizing it, but it seems my fears are imagined. Yep, she's not a fan. I let out a small, unnoticeable sigh and forced myself to smile back at her. Boy, this is... A lot of ugliness still here. Practice. Same as usual. The only thing that's changed is the state of my fingers. Though I am concentrating hard on the accompaniment so that my stepmother doesn't appear, the performance is somehow bland. I play all the right notes, but it does not seem like a human playing. It seems Komikado has noticed something is off, but since it's not a problem of technique, all she does is furrow her brows and look at me. Your heart ain't in it. Your heart is somewhere else, and you need to go find that person with whom your heart resides and say some things. Lots of very, very important things. I made no mistakes, but my unease is coming through because the Cold War happening between my Amitié partners. The instant my mind starts wandering the thoughts of what I should do, the shadow of my stepmother rises up. She appears before me like a ghost, which is better than her peering at me through the keyboard, but... I take in a deep breath and focus back on the keys. Then... The loud sound of the cathedral door being flung open makes my stepmother's shadow disappear and my fingers come to a stop. 
主の見舞いで想像し失礼ですよ The upperclassman, who has come rushing in, flinches at Komikado's unusually sharp admonishment as though she had been struck by lightning. Like an, like an emissary carrying an important message, she rushes to Komikado's side and whispers something in her ear. Did another H Bomber Guy video just drop? Rico whispers, apparently having some bad the same bad feeling about this as I am. The cathedral, draped in red sunlight like the classroom yesterday, is completely silent as we watch Komikado whispering. It is like a scene from a fresco painting, I think, but it abruptly dissolves as they finish up and the upperclassman she was whispering to leaves. The scene changes to a portrait of Komikado, thinking to herself with her hand on her chin. <clears throat> when Rika, unable to stand the silence, speaks, the ice breaks, and I feel as though the whole room has breathed a sigh. What? What happened? Yes, I answer automatically upon hearing my name. Oh God! Did something happen to Mayuri? I can't deal with that. <clears throat> Don't let something have happened to Mayuri. I, my little, my little plushy heart cannot take that. Oh, jeez. He's been dead for a long time and didn't even know it. Robert Young. Crossfire. The sight of her in the nurse's office is ga- Oh, jeez. To make matters worse, the white- The white of the nurse's office burns red in the sunset, painting the girl lying in bed the color of blood. No, what I thought was blood only looks like blood because her shoes, which were removed when she's put to bed, appear to be covered with blood. That's why I imagined the worst case scenario. Komikado, who had heard the story beforehand, must be thinking the same thing. No, her face is paler than mine as she looks at the figure lying in bed, her head wrapped in bandages. Komikado murmurs her name and then steps toward her. As we draw nearer, I realize the red on her boots and staining the floor is not blood, but red clay. I can tell when Komikado steps on it. I... What? What happened? I hear her whisper in a shaky voice, as though she's about to cry at any moment. What the hell happened? She whispers, and thinking back on Yatsushiro's condition, I assure her that there is no need to worry. What the hell did she do? Rika nods, her intense expression unchanged by my joking words. Yatsushiro is so agile. For her to make such a mistake, it's hard to imagine. That is why I'm assailed by the pressing feeling of death. Did somebody fucking try and kill her? What the hell? Oh my god! Well, I mean, school nurses typically. You know, they they handle small things. They can handle cuts, scrapes, and bruises. Maybe, you know, help settle a break until somebody, you know, until they're at a hospital. But if it's like a concussion or something, you're not going to just let that hang out at the school nurse. I'm sorry. That requires a little... As somebody who has had a concussion, I can tell you, maybe something you don't want the school nurse dealing with. Contrary to my comforting words, 
I feel a sense of apprehension. I gaze at the scarlet campus and repress the burning apprehension inside me. Oh my word. What is even going on? The reason for my apprehension soon becomes apparent. The day after Yatsushiro is taken to the hospital, the classroom, before morning prayers, the class seems agitated and distracted. Oh god, did she die? I don't have a good feeling about any of this. What? Oh. oh no! What? Why? What? This is all bad! It's all bad! I hate it! What is happening? Took? In my mind's eye, I can see Mayuri's pained face from last night when we told her about Yatsushiro's injury. Don't tell me. Oh God, it's, they, did she, what? Why would Mayuri have anything to do with Yatsushiro? And she's not quitting, like this is too much like a bad thing happened and a bunch of people think this one person did it. Yatsushiro's serious injury from yesterday instantly comes to mind. Though this thought comes to me like a bad joke, I shake it off. Even if it's a joke, it's not the one it's not one I can laugh at. What even happened to her? Could somebody tell me that? The way she says it puts me at a loss for words. What in the world? How did this happen out of nowhere? Just when I think that this game is doing one thing, now we suddenly have attempted murder? What is happening in Flowers Land? I just wanted soft, cute girls falling in love story, not attempted murder. What? Why would Mayuri? What interactions have Mayuri and Yatsushiro even had? Not an accident. And Mayuri is the suspect? Ringo is squeezing my hand tightly for some reason, and she's speaking very quickly about something. I just stare vacantly at her face. Her voice sounds like music being played far away, and I feel a fog sweep over me. <laughs> We're here to report, the twins say in unison. The report, yes, the report to help save her, to clear up this misunderstanding this morning. The reason the teachers came to take Maori away turned out to be as the twins had guessed. She'd been suspected as, Yuzur, as, ya, as Yuzuriha Yatsushiro's assailant. Because witnesses who saw the teachers take Mayuri away ran their mouths, the entire school knew about it before class even finished. The victim has many fans, so people are turning against her, but maybe because the students here are rational and don't like to speculate. That's a weird one. Boy, that, that tells you it's an idealized world. No one is so rude as to ask about it directly. However, well, I, my friends being my, my friend being a suspect in what it seems to be an assault doesn't make me feel very good. Nah, they are absolutely the perfect little rascals to go running around gathering information. Like if I'm if I need a recon done, we got the fruit twins for the job. I'm absolutely certain that these two could figure out pretty much anything. The right amount, we could bribe them with some hot dogs.
That is a solid point. I tell the two, who are genuinely worried about me, that I'm fine, and thank them. Ichigo smiles brightly and says, no problem, and scratches the tip of her nose. Oh, trust me, that's a whole barrel of monkeys there. Warmth floods my chest at the knowledge that they've been watching us. Oh my go- What? Like, is this some like 4D chess play where Rika has somehow set up some elaborate trap to ensnare Yuzuriha in a way that would get Mayuri blamed for it? Is that what I'm seeing here? Is that the way we're going? Is this gonna be the mystery? Is this the mystery of the chapter? Um, um, although the question trips me slightly, I nod. Is she really? She went out of her way to prevent the rumors from developing into bullying without me even having to ask. I was pleasantly surprised with how she talked with the students and asked them to look out for Mayuri. She knows the three of us are our Meteor partners, after all. <laughs> I love you, Ichigo. You are such a fun little shit. <laughs> Let her have her fun! She says... Uh, she says that she thought she was talking like a detective, to which Ringo and I shake our heads. Rumors are a good place to start, there can be a seed of truth there. Yeah, why is she the suspect? I don't understand. At this question, Ichigo taps her temple and begins with a, Here's how it all started. Sakura? Sakura. Well, I know what Sakura is, but I don't know. Yeah, that's a pretty little, <laughs> little bit of a scary way to put it. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> So, we're holding her accountable because of the word Sakura? Up to this point, it's not much different from the rumors spreading around the campus, including Yatsushiro saying Sakura. She was hit from the so- God damn! Somebody actually just whacked her in the head?! Hard enough to need to go to the hospital? What the hell did they hit her with? Yeah, 
これは体の弱いリンゴのお手柄だね She tells Ringo, who is bursting with pride, that this was very useful information. The back of her head toward the center. I see. If that is true, then it's highly unlikely that Yatsushiro would have seen her assailant. そこから一気に事件だって流れになった気を失ったままの八代先輩を町の病院へ送ってからあと上級生が聞いた「桜が」という声から犯人探しが始まったで分かりやすくというよりも当たり前だけど「桜」の名前名字を持つ生徒を呼び出し、oh. 教師陣の名前を呼び出し教師陣の名呼び出された生徒一年生私たちのクラスだけど桜のように入った生徒はいない<笑>でも上級生にはいたですよ二年生は一人三年生は二人計三人二年生は桜涼さん三年生は高橋桜子さんと桜木里央先輩 I open my notebook and write down the names. Proud of you, Ichigo. Live in the dream. I say high school is a place where you come to live all of your dreams, and I'm glad that you're checking them off the list just as much as Suo is. Though I, get, I bet Suo did not have. I mean, and if Suo did have solve a case involving somebody being brutally assaulted on campus, if that was on her list, I guess I wouldn't be too surprised given that she reads a lot of novels, so maybe that's not so weird. で、三人とも八代先輩が襲われた時刻には鉄壁のアリバイがあったわけ。さくらりょうさんは天文部の出し物の用意で部室にいたのを全員が証明したし、高橋さくら子さんもクラスの出し物を手伝って登場。さくらぎりお先輩に至っては、うちの料理部の先輩で、やっぱりその時間は部室にいたって証明されたんだよね。It was impossible that any of them could have attacked Yatsushiro if Sakura had nothing to do with the assailant's name. Sakura, to you, Kotobaga, Namai de Naito Stara, to Kyoshi, place. Sugini, Omoyu Kabetano. That's a little more of a stretch. Korega Yurini, a mascotan de one. Sakura to Kitara, a short and so soon of a shikatanaiba. The place where I first met Mayuri. Tamatama, Bijutsubu no Senpai Kara, Sakura Namiki no Seso, Tanomarete, Mayuri Sawa, Chumok Sarel Kotoni Nata. She was put there on purpose. I have to think she was put there on purpose. It sounds like she was very much put there on purpose, but I don't, I don't know. Like, why would Yuzuriha say Sakura when she got hit? Not adding up, like Sakura does not make any sense here. My brain just can't, I can't brain it right now. It's just not, it's not coming together. つまり、八代先輩が言った桜がは、桜並木に襲われたという言葉を言おうとしていたと曲解されたのです。It may be roundabout, but that's where it leads. If it was not the name, it was likely the place. However, アミティが絡んでいなければだけど。ユリが疑われる原因となったのはアリバイを証明してくれる人がいなかったこと
桜並木の清掃の際誰も通らなかったいや17時過ぎ正確な時間は曖昧だけどそこを通りかかったダリア先生が見かけたらしいけどそれも一瞬だけ証明にはならないとりあえず放課後を仕入れてきたのはこれくらいだけど何か分かった Are you gonna put me in detective mode for this? 新しい情報は Cross by Sun Square hitting her in the back of the head is news to me There are three upperclassmen with Sakura in their names Sister Basuki and Asana Mayuri at the time between five and six. Um. Hmm. Ichigo puts her hands behind her head and teasingly asks her sister, What the heck? Well, I think hard about a way to clear Mayori of suspicion. No. If our goal is to clear Mayori's name, we don't need to find the suspect. We just need evidence that it could not have been Mayori. Oh, we're going detective mode. Here we go. Ichigo offers her opinion on what would the what would be the easiest option. Yeah, that'd certainly be the easiest way for things to resolve. Dear phone, leave me alone. <laughs> We don't have weeks. We need to fix Mayuri's reputation now. I need to have. Suo needs to have a conversation with this girl about real feelings. Although right now most students are being rational and would not say anything hurtful to her face, if we wait too long, the winds might change. Yep. The situation right now is a bed of nails. <clears throat> <laughs> Haven't you any ideas, mateys? It's September. It can't be September 19th. It's not September 19th. We are very clearly in the spring. <laughs> <laughs> you really do know some strange words. I smile at Ringo's words, then tell them I want to look for traces of blood by the cherry trees. The twins nod, and I bow my head to them in gratitude for their help. You're good girls. You're good girls. I give you both head pats. I got. I was. The Lord gave me two hands. The Lord Haruhi gave me two hands, and it was so that I could pat the Sasaki twins on the head simultaneously. Damn right we are. My eyes blur at the Sasaki's words, and I thank them. Then we head to the cherry trees to clear Mayuri's name. <laughs> yeah, I think we're in this for the long haul. I think we're going to see this as far as we can. So buckle up, people. We didn't find anything. Well, all right. I guess we'll go ahead and wait then. I was going to, like, if we were going to go have a big investigation at the cherry tree and, and, and look around and stuff, I was gonna go ahead and continue, but I guess we'll go ahead and let it go because I got a feeling that this is gonna go on quite a bit more. And I'm, I think I'm absolutely on the hook to record another episode before I wanted to stop. So unfortunately, you're gonna have cold, hacky sounding Polly for at least one more episode because I'm probably gonna record another here in another 
X number of hours. I don't know how long I'll wait to do it, but yeah. Holy crap. Well, that was definitely a lot going on. Um, man, I, 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 as for like who attacked user hot and why, that's just so out of left field, but it, this feels like something that Rika could feasibly set up. Like maybe she was talking she was like maybe she was talking to user Iha to like have her be at a certain place to get her attacked. Like, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Like the word Sakura being in there is just throwing everything off because it's so it's such an it's so non sequitur, I guess. It doesn't really It doesn't add up. Something doesn't add up here. And uh, it's probably gonna be on Suo's big detective brain to figure it out um so yeah so yeah I, I was gonna stop recording until after Christmas but I, I I can't stop recording until after Christmas until we solve the mystery of what happened to Mayuri or, or what happened to Yuzuriha because obviously Mayuri didn't do it so yeah thank you so much for coming out thanks for watching as always big appreciated i hope you have a nice rest of your whatever and we'll see you next time bye